of so many of us are home and I want to go over things we can do while we are home. Like, like we've all been doing, I've been talking to a lot of my friends all over the world and it doesn't matter where you are. We're all kind of doing the same thing. So I want to share some tips on what you can do, how we can all have some fun and just share. Sounds great. Well, I'll pass it over to you. And again, if anybody has any questions, use a little Q&A there at the bottom and I will uh, relay those to Matthew. Matthew, I'll try not to jump in and step on your toes, but if I see a question come in that's uh, really topical to what you're talking about, I'll try to jump in and ask it, okay? Sounds good to me. Sounds good. All right. So should I just share my screen? Yeah, go ahead and share your screen. And uh, to the folks out there on the line, if you have issues with the viewing of the Zoom window, there's a lot of view options. Feel free to play around with those. But uh, for the majority of this presentation, Matthew will be sharing his computer screen. All right, guys, how are you doing? I am so happy you are all here. This is all about how to improve your photography while we are all at home. I know, you know we are all in a different time right now but this is actually a good time when we can actually stop what we've been doing and, and running you know, so crazy, trying to get so much done, reset, regroup, and give yourself time to do things that you haven't had time to do before. So I am so happy you guys are here. All right, let's get rocking and rolling. Again, I just wanna say welcome and thank you for coming. Wherever you are in the world, I am so happy you are here. Okay, let's jump right in. So for those who don't know, my name is Matthew Jordan Smith. I've been a photographer now for 35 years, 36 years actually going on. And I love this industry. It's been very good to me. I've been through ups and downs in 35 years and here we are in a down period. But I wanna tell you, we are going to get through this. And it's funny because when there are down times, it's usually a good time because it's a time for you to create new work, to figure out what you want to do in that time. And please, I know it's great to like watch Netflix and what have you, but use your time wisely. This time is given to us to create. We are creators. So hopefully what you'll learn today is going to help you to create more amazing work. So when this is over, you can prosper. That's what happens when you use your time wisely. Okay, so for those who don't know, I live in Tokyo, Japan. And normally there's a lot to do here. It's, it's very much like New York City in many ways. You can just walk out your door without any plans and stumble onto things like, like this, uh, sumo ceremony. I stumbled on this one day. And because of that, you know, I always have my camera with me. Wherever I go, I walk out with my camera because you never know what you're going to see. Like this day, I was just out and I saw there's a sign for the, the champion sumo wrestlers to be awarded um, when they win the season. And this is the, and he actually is still the current winner. Um, they just pause the season right now, but this is still the current winner of the sumo. He's the sumo champion here in, in uh, Japan. So I live here in Japan and there's a world of opportunities here. This is one of my favorite places to shoot. This is Shibuya, the, the busiest crossing in the world. I shoot here quite a bit. I'll do tests here all the time. This is actually when I first moved here about four years ago. And this is my first shoot in Japan. Well, I still shoot, still shoot here quite a bit. As a matter of fact, this was the beginning of this year. This is an image done in the same location. And as you can see, it's a very busy location. I'll test ideas out. So this is around the, the end of January, uh, start of February when I did this image. And back then, you know, it wasn't in America at all at the time. Um, wasn't in Europe at the time when I shot this image, but there were there were were hearing a lot about it in Asia, and I had the idea. And this is end of January to do this image. You see, people have coats on there. We're still kind of chilly, even though the model has this this uh, dress on. But it was a cold day 
when we shot this image. And I wanted to do an image that felt like January um, 2020. And I had no idea it would turn into what it is now, but this is an image I did at the start of the year to document what was happening at the time, mostly in China. Um, it wasn't here in Japan at the time, really, but you were hearing rumors about this, this, this virus. So this is my first image documenting something that I saw that was about to happen, even though I had no idea again, it would be anything like it is today. So anyway, this location is where I shoot a lot of my ideas, where my tests come in, and I love being here and capturing people. If I were to go here today, it's a very different scene. So again, I live in Japan and this is April 2020 and it's known for the cherry blossoms. This is when everybody from all over the world comes to Tokyo to see the cherry blossoms. Well, this is my neighborhood. This is like a block from where I live and there's a row of cherry blossoms that goes on for miles. And normally there are tons of people here. This was actually uh, a week ago and it snowed. Yeah, it snowed in April. It snowed on this day. And on this day, there's one guy on a motorcycle coming down the lane and one person far in the background walking down um, this lane by themselves. You'll never see this, this moment like this. So I want to document it as the snow started coming down. And the, the weather is still up and down here, but this is what it is here right now. Well, what I've shown you guys is not what I'm known for doing. I'm known for photographing celebrities. I normally go to the States about once a month. And that's been my life since I've been in Japan until the last uh, month and a half now. I've been here and uh, not traveling at all. But this is what I'm known for doing, doing portraits of celebrities, and here's Zendaya, who's probably one of the, the hottest young actresses out right now, and Mandy Moore on the right. This is where I do a lot of portraiture. And it's what I've done um, basically all my career. Um, basically, beauty portraiture is what I call it. And I also do a lot of fashion. But in the fashion world, it's more in the beauty side, cosmetic, hair. And there's a whole amazing world just in the world of cosmetics. That's been my world for like the last 35, 36 years now. And I love it because it never gets old. As a matter of fact, I could do this image in my home if I wanted to. I began my career by shooting in my small apartment in New York City. And I was doing images like this in a small space. And that led to me building my career. So right now, while you are at home, don't think you can't do things right now. You can. So I want to urge you all to shoot every day, even while you're at home. Yes, you will, be you will need to be creative, but I'm gonna give you some tips today about how to do that so we can get through this time together and so you can thrive way past this once it's all over and done with. I love this energy. I love this time when I can sit, be still, think of ideas, and turn those ideas into images and share them with the world. This, this time for us, it's really a blessing. So take it and use it wisely. I want to say this also because my, my first book that I ever did in my career came out during a real downtime in our career. It came out during 9-11. And that book really helped change my career. The same can happen for you. So use this time wisely. As a matter of fact, when you get up in the morning, give yourself a schedule, something you need to do every day and stick to that schedule. This will keep you on the path of creating and making your best work ever. So I've done a lot of work in terms of, of advertising and a lot of uh, covers for magazines. And this really started my career doing all this type of work. 
And what's funny when you are forced to work in a small space, maybe I'm not sure where you guys are right now, but maybe you're, you're in a big house, maybe you're in a small apartment in New York City or anywhere else in the world, who knows where you are, but it doesn't matter what space you are in, you can create something amazing. Think about it. How much does it really take for you to make amazing images? It's really up to you and your creativity. Yes, we have amazing tools today, but it's really up to you. So no matter what camera you have, no matter what gear you have, hopefully after today's webinar, you can create something amazing today that's gonna change your career once this is all over. Also, I wanna say this, this is a great time to reach out to all your clients, everyone you have ever worked with, because guess what? They are all home, just like we are right now. I've heard from clients I haven't talked to in ages because they're all home. And this is the time to connect with them and not ask about work, but see how they are doing. Find out how they're doing. If you haven't done this yet, do it now. Just reach out, say hello, ask how they're doing and ask how their families are doing. They'll remember you forever for doing that. I'm also a Nikon ambassador. Yes, I said Nikon because I live here in Japan and here we say Nikon. <laughs> I'm a proud Nikon ambassador and I spread the joy of photography all over the world. And I also love talking about photography, sharing it, talking about the joy. Hopefully today you guys are gonna learn a lot about what you can do even while you're at home. Okay, that said, we are going to jump into today's training. Now, if you have questions about things, definitely ask questions. Nathan's here from On One. He's gonna take your questions and, and feed those to me when they are appropriate. But I've got a lot I wanna go over and hopefully you'll get a lot today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Matthew. And before you jump in there, um, there is a there's a few comments people asking for the <clears throat> you to turn in your turn up your mic a little bit so we can hear you a little bit better. Um, uh, okay. So if you go How's into that? the uh, Zoom preferences and fiddle with the audio input, you might want to turn that up a little bit so that'll help and or bring the microphone a little bit closer. Okay, let me go there and see if I can go to my what no worries. Settings? This is the beauty of live. I do love that. I do love <laughs> that. Is that audio better? Can you guys hear me better now? I think it's about the same. Let me see if I can change how to do this. How is that now? Much better. That's awesome. I think that's, we've, we've, we've solved the problem. Okay, great, 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 great. Here All we right. go. All right, guys, we're going to dive right in. Um, let me know if you, can, if you can hear me well. I want to make sure you guys can all hear me well as we dive into this. I got a lot I want to go over. If there's anything you did not hear, let me know in a question. I'll go back over that again, but we're going to dive right into this training. Okay. Get back on that. So I showed you earlier this picture of what happened here this past week of the snow. So here's uh, a guy coming down the path by himself. This is normally a packed path of people walking all over from all over the world. And he's by himself. And this is what it normally looks like. But you know, in photography, it feels a different way sometimes than what you experience. What I love about photography, you know, I have so many images and sometimes I want to make them look the way it feels to me. So here, this is the reality, what it looks like from my camera's point of view. But this is what it felt like. So it's a snowy day. Um, this is a few days ago, as a matter of fact. The cherry blossoms, they're, they're everywhere. They're beautiful. People love them. I love them. So this is just doing a little tweak to make it feel the way I felt and the way I see it in my mind's eye. Again, I'm going to go back for a second. Here's re reality. And then here's a little tweak of how I feel. 
Now, I'll show you how I do this in a second, but I want you to think about this. There is reality, but as a photographer, we have creative license to make an image feel a certain way. So you know what it feels like to be out there in the cold when it's snowing. And sometimes your image may not feel the way you feel. You can change all of that. That's the joy of being a photographer. It is your point of view. So here's a little tweak to make it feel that way. Now I want to show you quickly how I did this. So I'm going to go in here for a second and let this begin here because in this image, you'll see here are the cherry blossoms at the top and they're very much a light pink. Here he is. I'm going closer so you can see more of the, the snow coming down. So in On One, what I love about this program, I have control to make it anything I want. I can use my color enhancement. So here I'm going to turn that on for a second. I can you know, choose any color I want to enhance. And it really just deals with that one color. I can doubt my saturation. Like I'm going to play around here just a little bit there. I'm going to hide that for a second. I'm going to go down to color adjustments, which is a little different than the color enhancement. Turn that on for a second. And here now you're seeing the color pop into the cherry blossoms. There it is turning off, turning back on again. You get the feel of the color now. I love playing around like this. But I discovered also there's a weather uh, section where I can change the weather to make it feel like snow, the way it felt to me as I was shooting. The snow was coming down so much, I had to keep cleaning my glasses and my, and my lens as well as I'm shooting. So this is what it felt like to me. And I want, the, I want the viewer to have that same experience. What's wonderful about this, I can change the amount of, of snow I want in the image. I love this. And I just discovered this now while we are home. I never played around with the, the, the weather section here before, but now I love this, this weather layer. And I've been having a lot of fun. And this has just been in the last week when I discovered it and started using it. I saw it before, but I'm like, oh, I'll never really need to use that. But here I am in the snow in April using it. Now, again, this is reality right here. But then I go and just turn on my color, turn on my enhancement, and then turn on my weather. And I get exactly what it felt like. Now, <laughs> this is the beauty of photography, and I absolutely love all that about that. I will save my settings, and then I'm good to go. So that's having fun. But let's talk about what you can do while you are at home. I was asking some friends before, like, oh, what are you guys doing? Like, oh, you know, there's nothing to shoot. I'm like, actually, that's not true. I've done so many photo shoots in homes. So I want to show you just a few of those things. And these are assignments that I've done over the years when I've photographed somebody in their home. So you can practice while you are at home. You can't stop shooting. When you do, you get a little rusty. So keep shooting. You have your family. Take pictures of them. If you're by yourself, take pictures of yourself. You're going to want to document everything that happens during this time because this is historic. People want to see your images during this time. I know this from a fact because I lived in New York during 9-11 and I looked at those pictures and guess what? I go right back to that moment and everybody in the world is going through this moment as well and they will be able to relate to your pictures when this is over. So take pictures all the time. Here I am playing around, and this is with a, a fish tank and a little color in the water, and I'm just backlighting it, and uh, you know I'm playing around with with playing with my. I have a a roller that I use to exercise, and and uh, when I'm trying to get the knots out of my shoulder, so I have this fish tank on that, and I'm just going up and down to give it the, the wave and taking pictures. Now I don't stay, take still life at all, but this is just playing around and having fun. And the more you do this, the more you are exercising your eye, being creative, and having fun. Now, will I ever use this for anything? Not really, but it was fun just playing around with it. 
Why sit and just watch TV? Do something that's gonna help you in your field. So here we are, I'm shooting in somebody's home and wherever you are, you can make them look beautiful. So what can you practice on while you are at home? Practice on making that person stand out. Say you're shooting in a very busy home if there's a lot of things going on. Exercise your eye to find how to make a person become the hero in the image where they stand out. And everything else is kind of secondary. So play around with your f-stop. As a matter of fact, it's not a bad idea to go through all your lenses and test to see which one is the sharpest lens. I've done that. Believe it or not, I test all my gear. I know which lens is my sharpest lens. And I'll show you guys that later on. I go through and find out, you know, how to shoot bodies in different ways. You do this by testing. You can't do it on a job. And this is the perfect time. And this is how clients hire you. So this, this client hired me to photograph her in her home. Then another client hired me to shoot her in her home as well. Now, both of these women, they're both billionaires with a B. They're both billionaires. And they both invite me to their home, paid me very well, flew me out, as a matter of fact, me and my team to photograph them at home. So practice now in your home. Find out ways to, to make people look good. Make your family look good. Uh, do your own self-portrait if you can as well. And make it look like this time, like April 2020. We're not going to forget this month ever. March, April 2020 are months that will be in history forever. What, will you, what were you doing on April 14th, 2020? Have a picture to show exactly what you were doing as you are improving your craft, becoming a better photographer. Practice, practice, practice. Go through every light modifier you have. Learn how to use your camera in every single way. Have fun doing this stuff. Here's an assignment I, I had to, to fly to China. This is like uh, five years ago, four years ago. And I'm photographing um, 75 actors and actresses. And this was an, an, an older actress who won their equivalent of an Oscar. And I'm photographing her in her home. So how do you know how to work in a small space or a big space? You practice right now. Find the smallest room in your home. And make yourself make a picture. Find something that's hard to do and force yourself to make a beautiful picture. Find the biggest room in your home and do a portrait and make that person stand out in the room while everything else kind of fades away. You can learn how to use your skill and take it to another level. This is not the time just to sit around and do nothing. So grab your cameras. Grab your lights, get together, and get out there and work. So here's another version of that of me making the the Oscar, well, the, the the Chinese Oscar basically stand out, making that like the hero in the image. So how do you do this? You're constantly pushing yourself to find an image. Sometimes you walk in a room and it's an ugly room. How do you make a picture in a room that looks like? like crap. How do you do that? You learn now by practicing all the time. So here I am in California, hired to photograph a, a conductor. And he and his wife, they teach piano in, in the house. And um, this is one room. So I'm shooting in the house. And I love the piano. Pianos are great. I'm using the lines to, to make him stand out and my light to make him stand out. You have fun. Find your image. Just because we are home doesn't mean you can't make amazing images. Put yourself in a hard situation and force yourself to make an image. As a matter of fact, maybe go into the same room for the next five days and try to make a different picture every day in that room. Will it be hard? Absolutely. But that's a good thing. 
it shouldn't just be easy. You're only going to grow when you go out on a limb and force yourself to do something amazing. So here I am again in another home, and I'm using light to make my subject stand out. He had a lot of things in his home, and I had to really force myself to find something to make him stand out. You want to do the same thing wherever you are. So when you walk into a room, look around, find, find your shot. We all have to do this. It doesn't matter who you are. Read great books. I mean, get off of Netflix. You know, it's not, this time it's not meant for us to be sitting around watching Tiger King. Get out there and make your images amazing. Work with light. So here I am with, a, this is a model, but we're in a home and I had her stand by a door. So this is just beautiful natural light coming in and with her in the black gown. It's just this beautiful light coming in the doorway. And I'm at a pretty wide open aperture. So everything else just falls away. I mean, you see the room behind her, but she's the focus. And here I am in the same house and we have, uh, there's a pool table in this house. So I had my assistant stand there with his hand on his shoulder and I'm shooting through his shoot through his uh, shoulder, the opening of his shoulder to get this image of her playing pool. Find ways to make your shot interesting. We are in a creative field, but it's up to you to be creative. Have fun with this. Again, I shoot a lot of different subjects and very often I'm hired to shoot somebody at their home. So here I am shooting an actress outside of her home with the pool. Now, I did light this. I brought my lights and I, I made my lights become brighter than the reality of daylight so it makes her stand out. Learn how to make your client stand out. Do this now by practicing, finding out how to learn all your gear. This is how we all get better. You don't have to always just shoot inside their home also. Like maybe right now, you have a big yard outside. How can you make a beautiful picture outside? For those of us who are not in a, a big city like New York, if you're anywhere else around the world, maybe you have a yard where you can go outside and capture something beautiful. Learn how to look at light. Exercise your eye. You only get better by shooting. So just because you can't work right now, doesn't mean you can't shoot. As a matter of fact, you should be shooting every single day. So here, I just got some twigs, put them in front of the camera, and start shooting. Simple. I had a, my aperture at a place where I could focus on her eyes, and the background and everything else falls away. You can do this anywhere. You just need to have the right lens, of course, but you find your aperture, and you should test your aperture anyway to find out how your images look at 1.4 or f2 or 2.8 or f4 or 5.6. Find out where your lens is the sharpest. Every lens is different. Find where yours is the sharpest. Just don't go by what it says in a book because everyone's going to be different. You've got to find out your gear, your lights, your cameras, your lenses. Find out how everything works and then use it to your advantage. This is me actually, um, a few months ago, I went to visit my family in South Carolina. And my parents, my parents are actually very shy about taking pictures. So I didn't tell them what I was gonna do. This is me using um, my Nikon Z7. I have a 105 lens and I'm shooting wide open. So that's 1.4 with that lens. I put my father outside and he said, stand here. He's like, what, what are you doing? I'm like, don't worry about it. nothing, nothing really. And I started taking his picture. He's like, are you taking my picture? I'm like, no, no, I'm not. Just, just stand here. So he's like laughing at me as I'm taking his picture. But I love this picture. You can't see it, but behind my father is the garage with his truck inside and his car inside. But it's in shadow, but it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm wide open. I'm focused just on his eyes and everything else falls away. Now, I had no idea that, you know, this, this virus was going to come and change our lives. I couldn't fly around like I normally do. But now 
I love this picture more than ever. This is the last time I saw my father before this virus hits. Tomorrow's his birthday, but this picture means a lot to me. I absolutely love it. My father turns 82 tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So I, I just love this picture. So while you are at home, maybe you're with your family, maybe with your children, maybe with your wife or your husband, take advantage of this time and photograph your family. This is important, so make sure you do this. If you're with your wife, if you're with your husband, if you're with your children, you need to have pictures of those you love during this time to document where we all are, what we're going through right now. You're a photographer. It is your responsibility to not just take pictures, not just to make money, but to document your life. If you think about this, photography is a way of you capturing your life. It's your fingerprint of where you are in the world at this time. So get out there, photograph your family, those you love. It doesn't matter where you are, you can find an amazing place to shoot, make them the hero, and guess what? You're going to learn how to be a better photographer. You're going to build your confidence. I mean, shooting in any room, finding a hard room to take a picture and making a great shot, that's going to make you feel so good. It's going to give you so much confidence that you can do anything and everything. Okay, now let's go for more tips on shooting at home. Let's say you're in a, a dark place. Like I know a lot of homes can be dark. Don't let that hold you back. On this image, I took a light outside of the window to light her. It looks like sunlight, but this is actually shot in Shanghai and pollution is so bad in China, um, there was no sun. So I had to make my own sun. So I took a strobe outside the window and lit her from that. It looks like it's natural sunlight, but it's not. So play around at home like that. Even if you are in a place where your home is a little darker, take a light outside, play around, and learn how to make that person stand out. She's in a room that was lit, but I want to take the light down in the room. So I use my strobe to do that. Exercise your options. Learn how to play around with light, exposure, to make the picture look the way you envision. Like earlier, I showed you a picture of reality and then how I wanted it to look. That's what we can do in photography. We are like an image magician, as a matter of fact. Play around, have fun, and make your image. And if you have sun coming through a window, absolutely put them in the sun when it's beautiful, like, you know, that golden hour, and get a beautiful natural light shot. Learn how to look at light. Learn how to see it the way a photographer needs to see light and make amazing images. Take a sip of my green tea here. Okay, let's go further down this. Here we are again with light coming through a window. Be aware of light. Now this light is gonna be here for like 60 seconds before it moves. When you see light come in, bring your family to the window and take their picture. As a matter of fact, while you are home, it's not a bad idea to keep your camera on your shoulder or close by you all the time. So when you see something happen, you can take an image right there in the moment. So keep your camera close by you. Make sure you have cards. Make sure your camera is charged up, your batteries are charged. You should have your camera with you every moment of the day, even while you are home. And depending on who you are with, take pictures of them as the light changes throughout the day. Find the light when it's great. Document what time it is when it's beautiful and bring your friends, your family, your loved ones to that area and take a portrait. They'll be happy, trust me, when they have a beautiful picture taken by you. You are photographers. We are photographers. Keep your camera beside you all the time. Even if you're just watching Netflix or whatever, 
keep your camera beside you and document that because this is you documenting your life. I love to shoot on beds. You know, if I go to like, you know, uh, out of town and I'm photographing friends, I'm usually photographing them in a hotel room. Take pictures in, in bedrooms and make it feel cozy. Find great light, like I said before, and get to work making people feel comfortable. This is time for you to exercise. Exercise your eye, exercise looking at your composition, the way you line things up, the way you see light. Learn how to make pictures more beautiful. We never know everything. You only get better by shooting and shooting constantly. Okay, now after you've done all of this shooting, now what? This is when you get to have a lot of fun. So what I'm going to show you, you can do at home. So let's dive into this. So this is a portrait. I did this on stage, but I could do this in my home. You don't need a lot of space. Now, once again, this is where I'm, I'm shooting fairly wide open. And I'm shooting again for my, my Z7. I'm using a 105 lens and my, my f-stop is 1.4. I'm just focused on her eyes. This is the final image, but I want to show you how I got here. So I love on one. I love it because I can find images quickly. I can go through and cull my images in a way where if I do a shoot where I shoot, you know, 200 images, I can find my great images quickly. Here's my process. I'll go through really quickly when I first do a shoot and I'll give a one star to all the images that I like. This is what my, my first view of all the images, a one star. Then I'll go through them again, being a little more picky and I'll find my, 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 my three stars, the ones that are just a little bit better. I do this fairly fast because I want to go on a gut reaction, what stands out to me. Then from there, I look at just the three stars and find the best ones. And those get my five stars. Then this is when I start really comparing images side by side. I'll do a side by side comparison to find images that I think are fives to find out the best image. Sometimes the hardest part of photography is finding your best images. I love on one because it makes it easy for me to do that. And it can make it easy for you too. I also want to make sure that my image is sharp. So I go through and I highlight to make sure what's sharp. Here I see my focus is just on the eyes. It kind of, it's kind of hard to photo, you know, make sure you have the image in focus when you're shooting wide open. I want to make sure I had nailed the focus. And on both of these, I did, thank God. But I found out, okay, I feel more connected to the image on the left than the right. What do you guys think? Which one is stronger to you? For me, it's that image on the left. It's just something about her eyes in this picture that feels more connected. So that side-by-side -side comparison is really good to do. I'll go close just to make sure what's in focus. Again, this is 1.4. It's a very, very shallow depth of field. It's just her eyes in focus. I mean, look at her, her ears. The ears are gone. Her skin's gone, as a matter of fact. You look at her skin or even her eyebrows. It's just her pupils that are really in focus. Then I, that's my top select. I can now mark it up, send it to my retoucher, and that's my final shot. That's how I go through and do all my images. It's just that fast. I love going through and culling my images this way. A lot of times, you know, you don't have time, but I've been going through and finding pictures that I haven't had time to look at before and finding amazing images this week and having a lot of fun doing it. So let me tell you guys now how you can improve your photography at home. What I'm about to show you, you can do today at home. You just need a few things to make it happen, but this is me having fun. So every home has a bathroom. This was my last shoot before our world changed. I was in Vegas 
And whenever I'm in Vegas, I call a friend of mine and we always do a shoot. So I'm shooting in my hotel and this is the bathroom in the hotel. And I had the idea and it sounded crazy to her, but she agreed to do it um, because we always get great images. So I am using a light on this image. I'm using a uh, a CLX-10 light here and I'm shooting in a bathroom, as you can tell. So I had this idea. I'll give you another view of the light here. I actually have the CX, CLX8 and the CLX10. I think this is actually the, the, the 8. Um, but I have both, and I love both those lights a lot. So she's getting ready. I'm telling her I want to shoot in the bathroom. When I first explained the idea to her, she was like, will the pictures, what are they going to look like? I'm like, you, you've just got to trust me. But the idea in my mind is going to be amazing. So we do the shoot. And I tell her I want to get her wet. So to make sure her makeup is like, you know, waterproof. We're in a shower. There's two heads in the shower. Whether it's one head or two heads doesn't really matter. But you can do this at home. I put out a black sheet. I use gaffer tape to tape uh, around the back of the wall in the shower. Um, And then I just have the shower running. So the idea is to use one light, very simple, Um, The setup is extremely simple for the shot. I want to make it look like rain on her. Now, this is the shot. This is exactly how it happened. I had her get her hair wet. Um, She's on a white background. I used a light meter to get my exposure, to get everything just right. I played around with my different shutter speeds to make sure I can get the water having a little motion to it or freeze it. That's a lot of fun to do. But then... I really got into it because I knew what the final image would be because on one has some amazing tools. So again, I just want to go back. This is the reality. I knew what I wanted to do, but I had to shoot it first and then add all the elements to it. This is the, is this two heads in the shower? I talked her into like, let me shoot. She bought clothes that she can get wet. And then we went to work. So here is the first version. Now take a look at this. I love how you can do this in On One. I've never seen a program that lets me have fun like this. Now, I'm going to show you pictures of her today. But imagine this with your kids. Let's say your kids are at home with you and you don't know what to do with them. Take pictures of them like this. This works on anybody having fun. Put your kids in a, in a bathing suit, put them in the shower and take pictures and watch how you can have fun. Now, this is what I do. I'm going to show you guys exactly what I do with this. So on the left is a normal shower. You see those two heads going at one time. But the image on the right, I've enhanced it with the weather app in or the, or the weather uh, uh, slider in on one, I can add different types of weather. I can add snow, as you saw earlier. I can also add rain, but not just rain because rain is very different at different times. I can add drizzle or rain or heavy rain. Let me just show what that looks like. So here on the left, you have this light drizzle. Now, you saw how I first started shooting this. That's the, the water coming out the shower but I want to make it look like she's outside at night in the rain. So the one on the right is a light drizzle. Um, And then the one on the right is also drizzle. But what I've done is I've added two layers of drizzle. You have layers. And if I multiply the layers, it adds just a little bit more to give it a different feel. So here is two more images. Again, you're going to go back from where we were, the light drizzle on the right, and then multiplying the, the drizzle uh, on the on the right side, then here I have the drizzle coming down straight on the left, and then on the, on the right I have a heavier rain coming down. Can you see that difference there? It makes a big difference. As a matter of fact, you can add on to this by adding one layer of drizzle, one layer of rain. You can have the rain coming in from the left or the rain coming in from the right or the rain coming straight down like I have it here. I love this and I've had so much fun doing it. So here I have 
both the rain coming straight down and I have drizzle coming from the left. I'm sorry, from the right. Now, she doesn't have any idea about what I'm doing. So I've got to talk her through it as I'm shooting because this is in my mind on what I want to do. But I've got to talk her into this to tell her what I want her to do and imagine she's outside and it's pouring rain. Even though in reality, we're just in a shower in, a, in the hotel room. But it's up to you to be creative and to bring what's special to you to your images. You make your images. You create your images. And this is the time for you to be the most creative. I love this part of On One. And I've been having so much fun. Now, when I first shot this, I came back, I was busy and kind of forgot about the shoot. But we've all been home and I pulled these images out and I've been having a ball creating these images this week. I had the idea before, but I didn't have the time to do it. Now we all have the time. So here I am again, just playing around by adding drizzle and rain at the same time. I have her changing different clothes. We had a ball shooting. But I want to show you guys exactly how I go through and get my images. So here I am, I'm going, I'm going through and culling my images. I'm trying to find the right ones. You know, I've, I've read my light, so I have the right exposure for each one. I'm just now trying to find what's the right image. Where's the strong one? So I pick that one, give it my five star. I make that one larger so I can see exactly how it is in reality. This is what it looks like with my two shower heads coming down. Now I want to go and check my focus. So I go to show the focus peaking. The green is everything that's in focus. So I want to check that out to see if I have it in focus. What's in focus? She's moving quite a bit. Now, she's under warm water also, so I got to make sure the water is staying warm. But I want to see what's in focus as well. So I'm shooting a wide lens for this image. And now that I have my shot that I want to play around with and enhance, I can open up the weather part and start really making my image come to life. So here I'm going to go through and I can either go with my a manual setting for my uh, exposure the way I have it already, or I can go through and play around with the, the AI match or the AI auto. I'm going to show you all those so you can see what it looks like. This is AI match coming in about right now. There we are. Uh, that's, and then there's the AI auto. And it depends on what you're shooting. That was too bright for there. So I'm going to go back to manual because my settings were right on point. So I'm going to stay with that. I can go through and, you know, add a little bit of contrast if I want to, which I normally do a little bit. Or I can just go into my effects. And this is where I get to have a lot of fun. So I'm going to go through and add a little bit of, let's go and add a little bit of color enhancement there. I want to just go through, I'll show that now for a second there. Hit that. I'm going to just enhance the red, just a tad, just a little bit there. You see just a little bit of red just popping stronger in there by just going and adding that. I'll hide that now. So here at off, off. Then back on. You see that red, how it really pops right there? I love that. Okay, so you have all these options to play around with your, your vibrancy. I can make it where it's not on the skin, which I don't want to be on the skin. I don't want to be on that red garment only. That looks pretty good there. Let's go and hide that now and let's go through and, and add another filter. Let's dive now to dynamic contrast, make it really pop out and stand out. Now, I want to show that for a second because you can change your opacity. If it's too much in terms of your contrast, there's a slider and there's a slider on all of these. So I can change it to be exactly what I want right now. It's at 100%. Let's say I want to take it down. I can take it down just a little bit if I want to, to back it off to the place where I want it to be. And that's, that's pretty good around there. Yeah, I like that around 70%. So that's pretty good. Just, so that's off, that's on. That's my contrast, my little dynamic contrast. And you have total control with the slider to get it exactly where you want it to be. Great, great tool. Okay, I think that that feels pretty good right there. So let's now, uh, I'll hide that now. Let's be right in there. I think that should, that should be good. 
Yeah, okay. So now let's go through and, and really have some more fun here. I'm going to now go back through and uh, go back now and go to my color balance. You can change anything you want here. And I love all the options I have. I love how easy it is to change every part or just a small part. You have so much control and it's easy. It's not learning how to do everything and how it works in one uh, program. It's just simple and easy. It's intuitive. So play around with all the sliders. Find out what you like. Experiment. We have this time for us to sit around now and use it to learn a program. Learn how to use it to make your images look like you, to feel like you. So you can play around with your color balance. Play around with all these different uh, you know, uh, sliders and figure out how you want your image to look. This makes life so much easier. Hit the more also because there's more options in the more side. Just go down and see how you look. As you slide through them, it's going to change the image so you don't have to like actually set it in. You can just go through and slide over it and it's going to show you how it's going to change your image and make it come to life or, or pop out or whatever you want. Uh, that's kind of cool there. Uh, that's good enough, I think. So you guys get the idea. Let's now go in and go on to, oh, I want to, the amount also. You can change any amount as well. If it's too much, you can back it off. I love the sliders. So it really is you having total control of your image. I think that's kind of cool there. I think why I should now go and really dive into really enhancing this. I'm gonna go down to my my vignette. I actually add vignetting to almost every image that you know you see, and I had the the option to make it you know strong or subtle or anything you want it to be. Now here she's on a black background, but the edges aren't so important. I want the focus to be on her. I want to make her the hero of the image. So everything you don't need to see, you don't see there, just adding that little bit of a vignette makes a nice little difference there. I want you to see it, but not where it's distracting. I want all the attention to be on her. So cutting down the edges just a little bit, to me, really makes her the hero of an image. Now, in this image is just the background, the, the shower, and her. But still, by having my vignette, it really makes the attention come right to her. When people look at your pictures, they're not just looking at your picture. It's you and everybody else, and they compare your images to everybody else. The more you can make your pictures stand out, the better. And I love on one about that. It helps me make my images stand out. So, you know, your clients can see something different about your work. That's how they hire you. So here I'm going to add a little bit more now. I'm going to go in through and add the portrait part, which is just really for the skin. Uh, I'm a beauty photographer. I do a lot of beauty. And as you guys saw earlier, a lot of beauty and celebrities. So I love to have beautiful skin. So I'm always in this skin part where I'm just going through and just giving it a little bit of tweak to take away any blemishes or, you know, smooth out the skin just a little bit. I can also go through and make the eyes highlighted or the mouth highlighted. I won't do the eyes or the mouth in this part because, you know, she, she's in the shower. But I do want to change her face just a little bit and clean it up just a tad. So here we are turning it on and off. It's just a little bit. I don't want a lot because, again, you know, she's in the shower. So I don't want to really give it too much. But I'll go through and tweak it just a little bit. I'll hit the skin. I can select where I want it to be, take away the blemishes, take away the smoothing, actually add smoothing and get it right where I want it set that, and then I'll go through and start adding more in terms of the rain to give the, the effect that I want. But this is the skin. I really like that, like that. I think that's kind of cool right there. Let's now hide that. Let's go back into our effects for a second. So we got that there. I don't need that one there. I'll take that one off. Okay, that looks good, I think. Yeah. Let's my green tea here. I'm always going, taking my, my sliders, turning them on and off as well. So I love that. So you can always turn them on and turn them off. Let's go back to our effects now. Those look kind of good in there. And let's now go through and add another effect here. Let's add our effect there and we'll go down to weather. This is where we get to have a lot of fun. 
So you see the, the real water coming down in the shower on the left and the right. There are two heads here in this shower. I mean, it's Vegas. So I can go through here now and start playing around with the type of weather I want to add. If I want to add snow, I could do that earlier. You saw that earlier. But I'm just going to do rain here. So here we are, drizzle coming in from the left. That's kind of cool, actually, seeing it that way. Here's drizzle coming in from the right. I love that more because of the direction of the shower, actually. That looks so cool. Just, just like that is beautiful. So you have it coming in from the right. Looks realistic. I can also, you know, change so much here. Like, look at this, the scale. I can change the scale of the, of the drizzle. Look at this as it moves in becomes a little larger. You have so many options in this one weather pane. I absolutely love this part. And I've had so much fun playing around with it. You can, you can add layer after layer of this to, to multiply the, the rain or the drizzle. You can have it going in different directions at the same time. It's just so much you can do. Now, here we are in a shower, but does it look like it? Not really. So here we are, let's see, go, go down to, to the rain part. Oh, here we are, show, going, going straight. So I can have it coming down straight like it's really like pouring outside. Can you see that? Here we are just having it coming down straight, just really, really beautiful. Let me turn that off, then turn it back on again because you see where it was and how the rain comes down straight. Really, really beautiful seeing this way. There's all these options you have in front of you to take your images and go and add so much to it. You know, here's the right side again, straight. And this is now the rain. So the rain's a little heavier than the drizzle. If you want, you can add a, a layer of rain and a ray, lay, layer of drizzle at the same time. I've played around with this quite a bit, and I know I'm running out of time, so we'll go a little faster through this because I want you guys to see all the great things you can do. Here we are just sliding it in just a little bit more. That's cool. I'm going to go ahead and pass this for a second because I want to show you now what I've done by playing around and getting my images to look great. So she's being wet in reality for sure, but I'm adding more to give this other feel. We're changing clothes to give her a different feel. And we had so much fun this day, and I absolutely love these images. I'm playing around with the shower coming down straight. I'm changing from black and white to color. So here you have two different versions where I've played around with uh, both the black and white version, with the color version. This is you having fun. So also, whenever I'm shooting, I'm going to change my perspective. So I was using a wide lens at first, and now I'm going to go to using a 105 lens. So I'm just going to do really what I do a lot of, beauty. So here I am where I change to a, a tighter lens, and I come in and just shoot more like, you know, um, shoulder up and still get this effect. This is toward the end of the shoot. So her hair is really, really wet now. And the makeup was great. We had her like, I had her just go through and, and uh, you know, update her makeup a little bit, but it worked out so well. And I love how easy it is to make these images all by just playing around and finding your shot. So it looks like she's outside and it's pouring rain, but you guys now know how I shot this image and how much fun it was to do. This is fun. And you can do this right now at home. You just need a few tools. That's it. And you need on one. So get in there. Get in there. Play around. Have fun. Because I've been having fun. You guys can follow me on Instagram under Matthew Jordan Smith. I have loved this time with you guys. I love photography. I know you guys do too. So ask any questions you have right now. We are here. I'll stop sharing for a second and uh, we'll take questions.
Sure, Matthew, there's been a lot of questions come in. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, earlier in the presentation, you were talking about lighting through the window. This question comes from Mark. He wants to know, uh, when using your lights outside through a window, are you using continuous lighting or a strobe? Oh, great question. I've done both, actually. The image I showed you guys earlier, that was actually strobe. So the strobe gives me a little more uh, flexibility in terms of, of making my, my sunlight less or the room less. With a constant light source, um, I use both. I use a lot of constant lights. And I use a lot of strobe lights. Um, on that shot, I use a strobe because I want to take my, the room light down more. So it was easier doing strobe with that. But the images I just shot with in, the, in the bathroom, those are all done with constant light. Awesome. Thank you. Next question. Uh, German wants to know, um, how did you find what is in focus with that green color? And I think oh. I can help answer that question too. Okay. That's actually a setting you turn on and on one. If you go up to the view menu um, in the top menu bar and turn on uh, focus, um, focus mask, it'll actually yes. put a green overlay over the image and show you the area that's most in focus. So that's just a setting inside on one. And I, I love that one. I use it all the time. I use that all the time. Uh, got some nice comments here. Greg said those black fingernails really added to the images. Great pictures. <laughs> um, Anonymous would like to know, and this is a good one. Uh, great if you're into portraits, but uh, what if you live alone? Um, what do you say to those people out there that don't have another subject to photograph? I love that one. I love that one. So, you know, uh, me in, in, in Tokyo, it's me and my wife, but sometimes, you know, my wife does not want to be in front of the camera. So I do a lot of self portraits. As a matter of fact, I do a lot of my testing on me or also like um, I have a, a mannequin head and I use that to test a lot. I love that question because very often it's just, you know, a photographer by themselves and I get that. So a lot of my tests I will do on a, a, a mannequin head to test my lights, to test my, 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 my exposure, to test my sharpness on my lens. As a matter of fact, when you're testing your gear, you don't want to really test it on a person because you could lose a mate that way. <laughs> it's better testing on an object, or in my case, I have a mannequin head to test the sharpness of all my lenses. Great. Thank you, Matthew. A couple other nice comments. Uh, Daniel says, no, question, but no questions, but huge thank you. You're a great influencer, encourager. Thank you. German says, thank you. Great. Uh, Evan does have a question. Um, when shooting the actress in her home in Japan, was that natural light or a one setup? The actress in, uh, that was actually, the one by the window was natural light. But I just actually finished doing a shoot of her and we were using strobe throughout the entire shoot and that was the end of the day. We had finished shooting and I looked and this light was coming through the window. I'm like, oh my God, don't take off of anything yet. Come to out the window. And I got that shot. So that was natural light. After we had finished shooting all day long, I was shooting strobe for that day, but the light just came through the window at the end and it was beautiful. And I had to capture that moment. Awesome. Well, thank you. And thank you for coming in to share uh, your uh, inspiration with us today, Matthew. Uh, this webinar will be, uh, was recorded and will be posted to the On One website here shortly. Um, and on top of that, uh, looks like we got a bunch of more thank yous coming in. We're a little bit over time, mm -hmm. Matthew, but thank you for the awesome presentation and, and motivation for all those people that are out at home. Um, I can't say it enough. We really appreciate you coming in and doing this and I'll uh, hand it over to you to sign off. Sounds good. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. I love photography. I know you guys do too. It's been great for me being here and being able to share you know, my time with you guys. I absolutely love it. Don't feel like you can't shoot anything just because you're home. Use this time wisely to increase your knowledge of photography, your craft, make your images feel and look like you. Good luck we're all going to get through this together. Use your time wisely. Thank you guys for your time. Be good. Sayonara. All right. Thank you, Matthew.